There's going to be a really quick commentary on the Alzheimer's drug lecanemab and the recent clinical trial on its effects. Now, as many of you know, Alzheimer's disease is truly a devastating one. There are virtually no treatments that could significantly modify the disease progression. This means that eventually the cognitive decline that's associated with Alzheimer's disease will get worse and worse. And ultimately, the uh, severe loss of brain function will result in death. For many decades, it's been hypothesized that the accumulation of the brain protein amyloid is the cause of Alzheimer's disease. And one could say that this has become somewhat the leading paradigm, at least across some researchers of Alzheimer's disease. Something like the serotonin hypothesis of depression was still uh, 10 to 20 years ago. Now, a recent study investigated a drug called lecanemab, which is an antibody that binds to the amyloid protein and attracts immune cells to break it down. This results in a less protein and based on the hypothesis, less Alzheimer's disease. Now, recent news articles have been hailing this as a truly momentous breakthrough. But is that really the case? Have we figured out the cause of Alzheimer's disease? And can we now develop new treatments to effectively treat it? I highly doubt that. Like Derek Love mentions in his great blog in the pipeline, which you should definitely check out, there have been previous attempts to target this process of amyloid deposition with other antibodies, and also small molecules targeting upstream uh, beta secretase and gamma secretase enzymes. But none of these uh, drugs have really ever shown any beneficial effects. What this study focused on was the slowing of disease progression. The primary endpoint of the clinical trial was the change at 18 months of drug treatment on a clinical dementia rating sum of boxes scale. This is a widely used rating scale measuring a variety of aspects of cognitive functioning. Over the 18 months of drug treatment, both the treatment group and the placebo group declined in terms of scores achieved on this measure. PET scans demonstrated that there was less amyloid burden present in those treated with the drug. And indeed, the treatment group did decline less, and this difference was clearly statistically significant. Similar statistically significant differences were also observed in other secondary cognitive measures. But, but here's the issue, as Matthew Schrag uh, very nicely pointed out on Twitter. The figures displayed in this manuscript can be quite misleading. If you look at the absolute difference between the treatments, you can see that the overall results are not that impressive after all. The adjusted mean change from baseline at 18 months in the CDR ASPI score was 1.21, in the lecanemab group and 1.66 in the placebo group with a difference of minus 0.45. And let me remind you, this is on an 18-point scale. On the ADAS COG-14 scale, there is also a significant difference between the groups. Again, this figure can be misleading as the full scale has 90 points and the difference between the groups is only 1.4 points. Yes, there is a statistically significant difference between the placebo group and the drug treatment group, but it remains questionable whether this difference has actually any clinical significance. As the paper itself states, a definition of clinically meaningful effects in the primary endpoint of the CDR-ASP score has not been established. 
This means that it is unclear whether such small changes have any real-life significance in terms of disease progression or its clinical symptoms. The study data also uh, implying that there was a significant number of complications in the group receiving the drug treatment. Uh, these included things like brain uh, edema, uh, bleeding and inflammation. The ultimate question is whether such a small difference in the measured scales is worth the risk of serious adverse events. And of course, there is the additional question of costs. Drugs like these tend to cost tens of thousands of dollars a year, and if the benefit you are getting is not even noticeable in uh, real-life situations, what are you paying for? Obviously, more research is needed to truly figure out whether this treatment could be uh, disease-modifying over long uh, periods of time, since this study only looked at the, um, an 18-month period. But in my opinion, these results do not provide any strong evidence for such effects. If something, this study suggests, at least to me, that perhaps targeting amyloid as a treatment of Alzheimer's disease is not such a good strategy after all. And perhaps it would be better to focus efforts on looking at other possible causes of the disease and targeting those mechanisms. Thanks for tuning in. Please remember to press like and subscribe to my channel for future neuropharmacology content. Until next time.